So we're going to talk about Roman society. First thing I want to talk about is how do we know what we know about Roman society? Where does this information come from? One thing is that the Romans were writers and, and they wrote all sorts of things. They wrote down their history, they wrote down poetry, they wrote down um, personal experiences. The other thing is that Romans created a lot of things and, and that includes buildings but also includes art. Um, it includes uh, you know their homes and, and, and all the crafts that they did there. Another reason why we, we know so much about Roman life is that a lot of what the Romans built was actually preserved um, when a volcano explode, exploded called Mount Vesuvius and it covered the city Pompeii up and also a place called Herculaneum and it basically preserved a lot of this stuff uh, like, like paintings and art and even some glass bottles and things like that that normally would have been destroyed um, if they were exposed to the elements but because they were covered in ash it actually preserved a lot of it so the first thing I want to talk about is is this Mount Vesuvius and, and the volcanic explosion that happened there I'm going to show you some pictures of what archaeologists did and what they found one thing that's really interesting is these archaeologists when they're when they're digging through this ash sometimes they'd find air cavities and skeletons inside so what they did was they they actually started pouring plaster inside these air cavities or inside these air pockets and then the plaster would harden and then they found things like this so what they found was actual <clears throat> was actually uh, the imprints that bodies were making as the as the ash covered them up. So what we can see is actually the position the people were in when they died. Um, even expressions, expressions on their face. And, and we get a sense of, of personality here or this is a very personal thing. So these are just some of the, the body casts that they uncovered. We find the positions that they're in. They knew that they were going to die. And it wasn't necessarily an easy way to go. The other interesting thing is that it preserved the city Pompeii and, and Herculaneum <clears throat> unlike any other city. So here we see the Roman road. Um, if, if you look up here, we see these these uh, blocks sticking out of the road. So the question is what was their purposes right along there? These were actually speed bumps because remember they're chariots and so as, as they rode their chariots they actually had to slow down to put their wheels um, straddling those, those blocks. The other thing is these are crosswalks because you have to remember that these streets would have been very dirty because the exhaust of chariots is you know what. So they, they didn't want to step in it, so they would actually use these as crosswalks at the same time. This is a home that was preserved. Um, again, we, we get a, a great sense of, of what life was there by examining their buildings. Take a minute and look at this. What do you think this is? Well, this is Pompey's version of McDonald's. And in these holes right here, um, right in here they would have had food so you would have gone up to the counter you would have ordered and then they would have given you your food another amazing thing is art that normally would have been destroyed is preserved because the elements haven't haven't washed them away and so here we get a sense of, of what people wore what they look like this should not be new to you um, when we talked about Alexander the Great I showed you this picture this is actually a mosaic that was uncovered of Alexander the Great in Pompeii. We also get a sense of of their daily life here, what they did, their jobs. So here we see a carpenter. <clears throat> here we see a baker. I mean these are things that we normally wouldn't know very much about but because of, of these paintings we can tell a lot about them. This right here, take a minute and look at this. 
this is actually a party. Um, here we see some servants. One is uh, untying a shoe there. Notice how people are laying back when they're eating, uh, which is very Roman, because it showed your, your, your power and your wealth. Uh, basically, they would eat with one hand. So someone else had to cut their food for them and prepare their food for them. This is probably my favorite. Here's a, here's a group of people, and they're actually playing a game. Um, they're actually gambling. Later on, we'll talk more about a game called Tabula um, and, and explain the rules. But here we, we learn a lot about what they did on their free time just by looking at the art. This is interesting too because in Pompeii they actually found eggs that weren't cracked. So think to yourself, if these eggs were preserved, what else was preserved? I mean, when Mount Vesuvius exploded, this is a, a terrible disaster. Thousands of people died. However, from a historical stand, standpoint, we can learn so much from their tragedy. Okay, so let's let's talk about what we know about their daily life in Rome the head of the household was called the patrifamilias that was the eldest male and they literally had control over life and death of the people in their family they controlled all the property all the finances all the money crimes or or certain acts they could punish them banish them denounce them divorce them or even execute or kill their own wife. They could even sell their own children into slavery. So imagine if if your daughter I'm gonna sell you into slavery. Okay, so there there's a motivation right there. So that sounds pretty harsh, right? And from our standpoint, the women in Rome um were treated pretty poorly. They were not given any political rights. Um because basically they're seen as too emotional and they would vote however their husband told them to anyway so it wasn't a big deal back then um, but when we compare Rome to other areas Rome has has given their women an incredible amount of rights so let's talk about what they could do well they didn't have to stay at home like women had to in Athens they could even own property which means if you own property you don't have to get married really really young if you don't want to you can actually support yourself you don't need a man to live however they couldn't hold any political office or or vote or anything like that but they could attend public baths festivals games they they could have attended uh... the the circus maximus the chariot races or the the Colosseum to see gladiator fights and there's even some evidence that there were women gladiators that fought now when you got married <clears throat> marriages were most often arranged however unlike in Athens Roman women had a say in if they got married or not um, they had to get their father's approval to marry somebody but they didn't have to marry what, who their father wanted them to marry they were still getting married pretty young at, at 12 to 15. However, what's interesting about that is that sounds really young, right? And it is. But there was there was several women that didn't get married until their 20s. So much that in one point in Rome there was an actual law that said that women and men in their 20s that were not married had to pay a certain tax so they're basically fined for being single so we do know that it was a big enough problem that they had to make a law for it um, this picture right here this is actually traditional Roman dress if you're going to get married now that seems pretty strange to wear yellow and orange right uh, but you have to remember um, we also wear veils. Uh, if if you look at her, there's a lot of similarities there. Forget the color, right? If you change her outfit to white, it looks very similar to what brides wear today. So remember, plebeians are poor people, right? Uh, 
it's they're the majority of the population, but but they can't vote, they can't hold office. Um, if if you're living in Rome, they normally lived in apartments, and if they had a shop, they normally lived behind or above their shop. So here we see in this picture, we see the the ground floor. These would have been shops, and then uh, the owners of those shops would have lived behind or above them, which still happens today. If you go to New York City or even here in Idaho Falls, that that also happens. This looks like a pretty nice apartment, right? Until you, you realize that an entire family, like everybody, would live there. I'm talking aunts and uncles and cousins would basically be crammed in there because they couldn't afford anything else. Also, you have to remember, they don't have running water. So when nature calls, you can either go down the street to a public restroom or basically use a bucket. Fire is also a constant danger because for a long time they were the apartments were built with wood and they cooked over an open fire. So it seemed like every generation or two a section of Rome literally just burnt down. And most famously uh, the entire city of Rome burnt down under Nero. After that, they rebuilt the city using concrete, which is better, a little more fireproof. Um, so th the threat of, of, of fire wasn't as great. Okay, so that was a plebeian home. Now let's look at the patrician home. If you're rich, how would you be living? Well, they lived in huge single-family homes. Um, inside their home, uh, you might find several bedrooms, an office, uh, kitchen, dining rooms. They might have a, a dining room for the summer and one for the winter depending on uh, where the dining room is facing. They would have a garden area inside. They might even have a temple. They may even have their private bath or even an indoor swimming pool depending on how wealthy they were. So very very wealthy nice homes. Let me enlarge this picture down here. So, you, so this gives you a little more sense of, of what it would have been like for them. Now, here's what I want you to notice, is if you look on the outside of this building, you're not seeing a lot of windows, right? If you're rich, they normally had this square area and then a garden in the middle, basically as a fortress to secure their stuff so no one's going to come in and take it. You would also find uh, lots of art. And one that's kind of unique is mosaics. Some of you might be familiar with mosaics. I assume some of you have actually made mosaics. In order to make a mosaic, you take tiles and you put them together to form a picture. So this looks like a, a well done work of art, right? And it is. And it almost looks like someone painted it. But if you zoom in there, you're going to notice that there's tiles or stones that are fit really close together to form this large image. So you can imagine the time and the money that it would take to do that. 